What are the periodic table trends? There are six periodic table trends, but before we explain them all, we need to understand how the periodic table works. When we look at a square on the periodic table, we see three things. We see the element symbol, which tells us what element we're looking at. Under the element symbol, we see the atomic mass, which represents the mass of the element's atom, which is equivalent to the number of protons and neutrons in the atom. Finally, at the top, we see the atomic number. This number represents the amount of protons in the nucleus, which is also the same as the amount of electrons on the shells of the atom. When we look at the periodic table as a whole, moving across the table, the atomic number increases by one, which means that the number of protons and electrons increase. When we move down the periodic table, the atomic number also increases, meaning the number of protons and electrons increase. We also need to understand what shielding electrons are. Shielding electrons are the electrons found on the shelves between the nucleus and the valence electrons. They shield the attractive force between the outer electrons and the nucleus. Because of this shielding effect, the valence electrons feel less pull from the nucleus. Our first periodic table trend is the effective nuclear charge. The effective nuclear charge is the nuclear charge that the outermost electrons of an atom experience as a result of the shielding electrons by the inner electrons. To calculate the effective nuclear charge, you need to subtract the number of shielding electrons from the number of protons. Let's look at the effective nuclear charge of fluorine. We know that its number of protons is 9 because that is its atomic number, and we know that it has two shielding electrons because it is found in group 7. Being in group 7 means that it has 7 valence electrons, and 9 minus 7 gives us our shielding electrons, which is 2. To find its effective nuclear charge, we subtract 2 from 9, and that gives us 7. Therefore, the effective nuclear charge of fluorine is 7. As you go down a group, the E and C stays the same. This is because the number of protons increases as well as the number of electron shells and shielding electrons. As you go across a period, the E and C increases by 1. This is because the number of protons increases. However, the number of shells and shielding electrons stay the same because the electrons are being added to the same shell. The second periodic table trend is the atomic radius. The atomic radius is the distance from the center of the atom to the valence shell. As you go down a group, the atomic radius increases. This is because the number of protons and electrons increase. However, the electrons are added to new energy shells, increasing the number of shielding electrons. The more shielding electrons means the less pull the valence electrons feel from the nucleus. This creates more space between the valence shell and the nucleus, therefore giving the atom a larger radius. As you go across a period, the atomic radius decreases. This is because the number of electrons increase, but are added to the same shell. In addition, the number of protons increases, which increases the ENC. The higher the ENC, the more pull the valence electrons feel from the nucleus, meaning the distance between the nucleus and the valence shell is smaller, therefore giving the atom a smaller radius. Our third periodic table trend is the ionic radius. The ionic radius is the distance from the center of an ion to its valence shell. We know that metal cations tend to lose electrons to become stable, and nonmetal anions gain electrons to become stable. As you go down a group, the ionic radius increases. This is because the number of electron shells increases, which increases the shielding. This means that the electrons feel less of a pull to the nucleus, which creates more space between the valence shell and the nucleus, therefore increasing the ionic radius. As you go across a period, the ionic radius decreases. This is because the number of protons increases. When the number of protons increases, it increases the ENC. The higher the ENC, the more pull the valence electrons feel from the nucleus, giving it a smaller radius. Our fourth periodic table trend is electronegativity. This is the electron attracting ability of an atom. The greater the attractive force between a nucleus and shared valence electrons, the greater the electronegativity value. Electronegativity increases going across the periodic table because as you move across the periodic table, the number of electrons increases, which increases the attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. The greater the attraction, the greater the electronegativity value. Electronegativity also increases growing up the periodic table. This is because going up the periodic table, the distance between the electrons and the nucleus decreases, creating stronger attraction between the nucleus and electrons. And the greater the attraction, the greater the electronegativity value. 
Our fifth periodic table trend is first ionization energy. This is a measure of the energy required to remove one electron from the valence shell of a neutral atom. When you move across a period, the ionization energy increases. This is because moving across a period, the number of protons and electrons being added to the atom increases. This makes the nuclear charge increase, which results in a stronger attraction from the nucleus on the electrons. The stronger the attraction, the more energy it takes to remove an electron. As you move down a group, the first ionization energy decreases. This is because the distance from the electrons to the nucleus increases, so the electrons are further away from the nucleus, which makes the attraction from the nucleus to the electrons less strong. If the attraction is weaker, it requires less energy to remove an electron. Our last periodic table trend is electron affinity. Electron affinity is the measure of the attractive force an atom has for adding an electron to its valence shell. It measures the amount of energy released when an atom gains an electron. Electron affinity decreases down a group. This is because going down the periodic table, the atoms get larger, which causes more distance. More distance causes more shielding. More shielding causes decreased attraction between the nucleus and the added electron. This causes a low electron affinity, meaning not much energy is released when the electron is added to the atom. Electron affinity increases across a period. This is because there is a smaller distance between the nucleus and the electrons, meaning less shielding, which causes more attraction between the nucleus and the electron, and that causes a greater electron affinity. This means that more energy is released when the electron is added to the atom. And those are all the periodic table trends explained quickly. Thank you for watching! Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more chemistry videos, and don't forget to press the notification bell. Comment down below any questions you'd like to see answered next.